and then um, the first thing I usually do is I make the video big enough so I would be able to see what's going on my eyes are not uh, as good as yours after that I usually try to watch the video and enjoy Mr. Lenage being a cool guy and then after that I am going to move to the frame where the ball is released. So here we go. That's it. Now the ball is free from the influence of my hand right there. At this point, we're going to get the toolbar. So we expand here by clicking on this to enable the video analysis as stuff. I'll hover over this, point, uh, this icon here. That's add point. And we would like to add points at this from this point on. So here we go. I put the crosshair center right in the middle of the center of the ball. Click once. It moves to the next frame. Then I go to the next one. Moves to the next frame. 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 And each time I am clicking on the center of the ball and the program takes care of moving to the next frame automatically for us. That's what's neat about it. And at first, you know, experiment to get used to the program and the idea of clicking. Notice how in the background the program is already graphing stuff for you, which is kind of cool. And now I'm reaching the end. I rarely get close to the rim. So now we've got what we want. So we've got the Y uh, in blue and the X in, in red. Um, at this point, what we would like to do is we would like to establish a scale. Because if you look in the background, you see the numbers in red and blue here. They are not reasonable because they are measured in pixels. So we want to change that into real-life numbers in meters. So we need to set our scale. This is the set scale area. So we click on that icon. And then notice how it changes it to a crosshair again. And we would like to grab this and go to a position where Monsieur Lenage is almost kind of standing. I think that's about true. And we put the crosshair right at the tippy top of my hair and go all the way down and let go. As soon as I let go it asks me what's the actual height of the person. So in this case each video at the very end there are three digits. They are the height of the given person uh, in question um, in centimeters. Since it is asking me to do that in meters, so I need to write 1.70 because the three digits at the end of this movie that I uploaded is, or downloaded rather is one, uh, 170, so it should be 1.70 meters. Hit OK. Notice in the background how the numbers change it into meters, reasonable units all across the board. At this point, we would like to insert a text box because we're going to be needing it to enter some information. And once you enter the box right there, at this point, you would like to organize everything. So you go to Page and you say Auto Arrange. And then at that point, everything will look very tidy and very nice. Look at that. You've got the movie, you've got the table, you've got the text box, and you've got the graph. The graph needs a little bit of uh, further tidying. Uh, we want to focus only on the Y because we're doing a uh, vertical motion analysis. And we would like to have a title. A plot or a graph that does not have a title is not a cool graph. So here we go. Double click there on the window. And then at this point, um, I'm just going to write cool notch plot, something like that. Okay. And at this point, say click OK. Notice, nice title there. Uh, from this point on, we would like to do a uh, curve fit for this. It looks like a parabola, therefore a quadratic fit would be the appropriate thing to choose. Notice here it's already selected for me. If it's not, I need to select it right there. Here we go, AT squared plus BT plus C. Say try fit. At this point, it gives us some uh, numbers, A, B, and C. We're going to see how those will become beneficial to us. So we hit OK. That gives us 
a uh, little description right there of these things. So the number that would be of interest to us is this A number here, negative 4.627 in my case. Of course, in your case, it's going to be a totally different deal. Remember, you're doing a totally different uh, video than someone else. Okay, if you recall, I said in the text box, you're supposed to type all the stuff that I mentioned, you know, in the class. So, first of all, you're going to write, for example, y equals, and according to the program, this is a times t to the power 2, and then um, plus, and then um, capital B times t, and then plus c. So that's, that's what the program gave us. What we know from physics is y equals negative, and then uh, between parentheses, one half, and then times uh, the acceleration due to gravity, which is g in this case, times t to the power 2, and then plus, and then uh, v sub y naught times t, and then plus, and then y, y naught. Okay. At this point, my friends, we've got all uh, the elements. Now, from this, we conclude that the negative one-half g, okay, negative one-half times g, would have to be, just as I explained in class, is equal to the capital A. So from this, we conclude, so we could say like this, uh, this implies that g, uh, we multiply both sides by negative 2, so here we go, negative 2 times, um, oh sorry, I'm a great typist here, so negative 2, uh, times negative one half multiplied by the g should be equal to negative two times the capital A. And at this point, remember that the capital A is the coefficient in front of the t squared that the calculator that the program Lagopro gave us, while the negative one half g that's what uh, Cool Galileo and our physics people helped us figure out. So here we go. This would lead to the fact that G then, that we are looking for, is equal to uh, negative 2 times A. Well, of course, in this case, this will lead to um, the idea that in my case here, G is um equal to in this case negative two times in my case negative four point six two seven which I got from this A right there. By the way, don't worry about the plus or minus if you are sophisticated enough to handle it. Cool, if not, don't, don't worry about it. But in this case uh, this is measured in meters per square second. How do we know that? I'll leave it to you to figure it out. If you don't, then you're going to be a silly banana. And then at this point, this implies that G is equal to, and when I do that, negative 4.627 times 2, so that's 4, 1, and then 2 times 2, 4, 5, so that would be 9.25 uh, um, meters per square second. Okay, now at this point I'm going to quickly double check with my calculator to ensure that I'm not making a fool out of myself here. 4.627 uh, multiplied by 2. Sure enough, 9.254. Very good. Now, of course, this is the value that we are going to try to compare it with the real value of 9.80. Oh, so in this case, then, we're going to put the percent error is equal to, 
again absolute value uh, of the real value minus the experimental value and multiplied by 100 and you divide that by the real value again. So that means this would lead in my case to uh, the percent error okay being equal to the absolute value of 9.80 meters per square second minus 9.254 meters per square second again and then absolute value multiply that by 100 and let me go back here I, I like my stuff tidy divided by 9.80 meters per square second again the beauty of this is that all the meter square uh, per square second stuff is going to be um, is going to be canceling out so you end up at this point with a percent error a percent a percent error that is equal to and quickly with my handy little calculator 9.8 minus the answer here divide this by 9.8 the answer that I get I'm going to be multiplying it by 100 and sure enough I get 5.57 5.57%. 5 of course, in this lab, this is bad. So in this case, if it were you and you get less than, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, five, uh, higher than 5%, 5% or higher, it's not good. So you would have to redo. So in my case, I'm going to remind myself I need to redo this. Thank you. That's it.